2007 was a wild year. On the one hand, it was the year the iPhone launched and we were finally able to put the addictive power of social media in the palms of our hands and wreck childhood for millions across the globe. On the other hand, there was some shocking news that came up from a study published in one of the most respected journals dealing with hormone-related issues. So researchers had gathered blood samples from about 1,500 men at three different times between 1987 and 2004, and the purpose was to see what was happening to testosterone levels through time. So testosterone naturally drops as we age, and in men, when we reach the age of about 30, levels decrease by about 1-2% to per year on average, and this pattern is well established and it isn't necessarily a problem, it's just part of getting older. But there was some evidence that something else might be going on. Not only were testosterone levels declining with age, but it also appeared that they might be declining with each new generation as well. It appeared that something in our environment might be attacking testosterone and driving levels down. And this isn't just a matter of low sperm counts and poor sexual function. So low testosterone, it also weakens bones, it decreases energy, and it depresses mood. And it's linked to elevated all-cause and heart disease-related mortality. So researchers were compelled to figure out if this testosterone decline was actually real, and if so, what was causing it. So they started to look at what was happening to testosterone levels outside of the USA. So a large population study in Denmark, it also uncovered falling levels. So too did a study in Finland, and a more recent study again in the USA found that the trend continues. So far then, we've got multiple different studies in multiple different countries suggesting that testosterone levels are indeed falling. It appears to be a worldwide issue. But here's the real puzzler. Why on earth is this happening? And it's been a matter of huge debate. There's been no lack of ideas about the potential causes. So some have suggested that it's caused by pesticides that we're eating in modern diets. Then there's microplastics, which have been shown to decrease testosterone levels in mice. Or maybe it's aluminium. But the proposals so far have failed to actually explain the data. On the other hand, one important causal factor has emerged. Obesity. But even obesity didn't explain the full picture, as we'll see. So excess weight, it does trigger testosterone reduction through processes related to insulin resistance and other mechanisms. And the problem is that low testosterone itself can lead to weight gain, so then there's a negative feedback loop, and worldwide the rates of obesity are increasing. So in adults, it's more than doubled since 1990, and for adolescents, it's quadrupled. So given obesity's negative impact on testosterone levels, it seems that this might go some way to explain the trend. But ballooning obesity rates don't seem to tell the full story. So to see why, we need to have a look at a recent study from Israel. So researchers analyzed the testosterone levels found in tests that were given to over 100,000 men between 2006 and 2019. So in line with the current trend that we've been talking about, they also saw a population-wide fall in testosterone levels. But there was something interesting in the data. So when they looked at body mass index, they didn't see an increase across the time frame included in the study. This means that the drop in testosterone levels could not be explained by rising obesity rates, and researchers concluded something similar in the most recent USA study. They found that a decline in testosterone was even occurring among men with normal body mass index. So what might explain this decline in testosterone in Israel and elsewhere? Well, a new analysis gives us a completely unexpected answer. The authors of this new analysis, they were interested in a key issue lying in the background of the discussion about falling testosterone. And the issue concerns about how testosterone levels are actually measured. So this has been highlighted before. Researchers behind a 2020 study, for instance, they noted a potential problem lurking here. After reporting that testosterone levels are declining, they include an important qualification. So the data that they rely upon includes different measures for measuring testosterone levels. But why might that be an issue? Well, different measurement methods can give different answers. So suppose I had to take a flight and I crammed everything that I needed into my trip into my carry-on bag when I waited at my scale at home it made it under the 10 kilogram limit, but then I got to the airport, and when I was checking in, their scale gave a different number, say it was 11 kilos. Now, here's what I wouldn't do. I wouldn't call my wife to say, honey, you won't believe what happened. My bag gained a kilogram in weight while I was on the way to the airport. But you get the point here. When we use different measurement methods, any differences that we might see might simply be a result of the methods used. So now you can see the intriguing possibility. When it comes to testosterone, are our measurement methods distorting the true picture about what's really going on? 
Well, that's what the authors of this new study wanted to figure out. They explored health data collected in the USA during five distinct periods of time. So this same data has been used to establish the fall in testosterone levels by other researchers, like the more recent US study that we looked at a moment ago. But in this new analysis, they noticed something with a dramatic implication. Out of the five time periods when the data was collected, the first two used one method of measuring testosterone, but the later three used an entirely different method. So how do those two methods compare? Well, it's a bit like my scale at home and the one at the airport. So the newer method, it tends to give a lower reading. So when we plot the five time periods individually on a graph, here's what we see. So the bars represent the share of men with low testosterone, and the colors represent the different testing methods. So you can see that there's a huge jump in those with low testosterone with the new testing method, and the implications here are huge. That trend of falling testosterone, it might be just because we're measuring it differently. So the authors argue that we need a new threshold to reflect the new methods of measurement that we're now using. When we make that adjustment, then there's no longer any jump in the numbers of men with low testosterone. So that completely upends the narrative. Testosterone levels might not be falling at all. In fact, if you look at the chart, you can see that the percentage of men with low testosterone is actually falling over the last three measurement periods. So this might just be the answer as to why testosterone levels are falling. They aren't. But we need to back up here for a moment, because the authors are looking at the USA data. If we return to that Israeli study, this way of accounting for the decline in testosterone, it's not going to work. Because in that study, the authors explicitly state that the testing methodology was the same throughout the data collection period. So there weren't two different scales involved to speak, just one. Yet they still saw a decline in testosterone. But there's a crucial issue with the methodology used in that Israeli study that raises a big question mark. So let me explain. The men included in that study, they had their testosterone levels tested because they were referred by a physician. In other words, after consulting with their doctor, it was recommended that they got a test. So why might that be an issue? Well, because we're only going to end up testing men when their doctor suspected that they already had low testosterone. So the pool of people that we're looking at is consistently going to include those with existing concerns of low testosterone. So it's not going to truly represent the general public. So there's at least a big question mark when it comes to that study in Israel. But the big key takeaway of the story here is this, that the thesis of testosterone falling is at least in doubt. We might soon come to realize that the whole panic has been based on a simple problem with how we've been measuring testosterone. But whatever the true story turns out to be, what we do know is that individually, our testosterone levels do decline with age. So even if we aren't clinically low, it does make sense to try and counter that natural decline. So is there a way to do that? Well, if we're overweight, one of the most significant things that we can do is to decrease our body fat. So as I mentioned earlier, obesity is strongly linked to lower levels of testosterone. And a recent review of the literature identified weight loss as the first-line intervention to boost testosterone levels in obese men. So in addition to diet and exercise, medications like tazepatide can help patients with their weight loss journey. And speaking of exercise, scientists have discovered that resistance training does elevate testosterone, and so too does aerobic training. Then there's sleep. So researchers have speculated that getting too little sleep could impact our levels. So one small study tested this out by having participants cut back on their sleep to just five hours a night for eight nights in a row. So testosterone levels were higher throughout the day when they were in a rested condition compared to when they were restricting their sleep. And in a meta-analysis, it concluded that sleep duration plays a pivotal role in maintaining testosterone levels. So now my patients sometimes ask me about supplements for boosting testosterone. And there are some supplements out there with study evidence to back them up. So betaine or TMG, for instance, does have some evidence. So a study in soccer players who supplemented with TMG found increases in testosterone levels during a season compared to the placebo group. And a similar study with participants taking TMG who followed an exercise protocol also saw improvements in their testosterone levels over and above the placebo group. That research is one of the reasons why I take TMG myself as part of microvitamin. But just because I take a supplement does not in any way mean that you should as well. So here are four things to explore to support healthy testosterone levels. Weight loss, exercise, adequate sleep, and if you really wanted to explore supplements, TMG does have some evidence. But if you're interested in the study data on other supplements that have been shown to raise testosterone, make sure to check out this next video here.